Okay, shall we start? Let's start. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much to everybody for joining us uh, today. Um, this is the first of a series of webinars which have been designed to uh, support and enhance the entrepreneurship and agribusiness course that's being um, has been set up to support uh, the amazing Go Getters Agripreneur Prize 2020. Um, my name is Stephen Carr um, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of the Agripreneurship Alliance and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague Dr. Anne Roulin, um, also a co-founder of the organization and our president. And um, today what we hope to do is just really start the conversations between all of us, looking at what the course is about, what you can hope to achieve by participating and completing the program. Um, and what we will be doing is providing you with some more details about what is in the program and how we can make sure that everybody has a, a really amazing experience in following the course and having a great outcome at the end of it, having a, a superb business plan, which can either support the launch of your business or indeed if you have an existing business how it can actually work to upscale and grow your business to, and take it to the next level. As I've already mentioned we have got some fantastic people joining us today and I would first of all like to introduce uh, Dixon Naftali. Dixon is the head of Generation Africa, the home of the Go-Getters Agripreneur Prize. And we're really grateful that Dixon was able to join us today. Dixon is somebody who has um, years of experience both working within the private um, and public sectors across Af Africa, focusing on uh, topics like telecommunications, which are obviously vital for um, successful agribusinesses to develop, but then looking at um, having experience across the agriculture and agri-food sectors. So Dixon, thank you very much for joining us today. And I would like to invite you to say a few words. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for inviting me on this. I'm uh, really glad today to launch, uh, for the launch of the entrepreneurship uh, in agribusiness course. This is a great course and it's uh, part of the journey that we have had with the Go-Getters Agripreneur Prize. And it's also part of the journey for our Go-Getters community uh, building making sure that uh, we provide education and uh, online education, you know, so that everybody from all corners of Africa can, can be part of this. So I'm really uh, going to encourage uh, all the participants and uh, everybody who has been allowed to register for this course to take advantage of it and uh, ensure that you become part of this course that is going to help you eventually build your business plan as a business and uh, move you from ideation to startup to growth and to maturity depending on uh, what part of the uh, journey in your business uh, of entrepreneurship you are and so uh, to we're going to have a series of webinars and uh, these weekly webinars that uh, will largely be uh, directed by Entrepreneurship Alliance and also the Africa Management uh, Institute are going to continue farming you up uh, towards the goal of uh, having uh, your, your business plan and uh, uh, the, the 10 weeks of uh, this course just so that you get to understand uh, the course very well. And I guess this week, uh, the focus will be more on introducing you to the course, uh, outlining the curriculum, discussing your expectations, and reviewing the registration process so that we can have as many uh, people as possible registering. So please take advantage, go for it. The experts on this call are going to be very helpful, listen to them, and we'll also have a Q&A session, I believe. Thank you very much, Stephen, for, for that opportunity to say a word. Thank you, Dixon. The Agripreneurship yes. Alliance is really proud to be working in partnership with the Go-Getters Agripreneur Prize 2020. We think it's what you have been able to offer is an amazing opportunity for young 
agripreneurs from across Africa. And we are delighted that we're able to support the journey that Go Getters is on. But more importantly, being able to support the journey that the young agripreneurs themselves are also on. During this um, webinar, uh, what we hope to do is if you have any questions at any time, please use the chat function and um, to post please your Please use the Q&A function. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Q&A function, please. <laughs> okay, please use the Q&A question and answer function and um, post any questions that you may have. And we will answer those questions uh, later on as part of this webinar. I should mention that the Agripreneurship Alliance um, has been working within the field of entrepreneurial support to young um, entrepreneurs within the agri-food sector for the last three or four years. And we have focused initially on working with partners in East Africa, developing um, a course that, as you know, is called the Entrepreneurship and Agribusiness course. But we could not have developed this course without um, our deep friends um, and partners at the African Management Institute. And as you will know that if you've already registered for the course or if you are thinking about registering for the course, the course itself is hosted on uh, an online platform which is managed by the African Management Institute. And it's an amazing learning resource that uh, we are able to offer with our partners there. And so I would just like to invite uh, Patricia Mayner from the African Management Institute, Institute and Patricia is the Partnership manage, uh, Manager there, um, to say a few words about the African Management Institute and introduce the work that you do um, supporting entrepreneurs across a whole range of sectors um, across Africa. So Patricia, you're very welcome to join us. Great, thank you, Steve, and thank you, Anne. Uh, delighted to be here. Um, as you said, um, AMI and the Agripreneurship Alliance have been friends for a long time. We've worked together on this um, Entrepreneurship in Agribusiness course, and we're really excited that um, we have this opportunity to expand it to even more um, youth. So as Steve mentioned, I'm from African Management Institute, and my name is Patricia Maina, and I'm the Partnerships Manager there. And at AMI, we enable ambitious businesses across Africa to thrive using practical tools and training. And a lot of this is done with the support of the online platform that um, Steve has mentioned and that most of you have maybe probably already have some access to. So what we do at AMI is we work in three key areas. We work with um, leaders and entrepreneurs and managers in workplace uh, settings to help them develop the leadership and management skills that they need to help their organizations thrive. And then we also help companies to build motivated um, workforces. So working with their employees and their entry level staff to just build uh, winning teams. And then we also run work readiness and um, youth programs to enable youth who are either looking to go into business or looking to kind of get into the workplace, providing them with the skills and the training that they need to be able to succeed. And um, one of the key ways that we work and what is really a differentiator for us is that we believe in the practical application of skills. So it's not just um, kind of the theory of learning, but really taking what you learn and applying it either in the workplace or within your business. And as you delve into the platform and as you take the webinars with, with Anne and Steve, that is one theme that you'll continually see is this application um, of, of what you're learning within your business, even as you plan your business and as you launch your business. And so that's something that we continually do throughout um, the different courses and the different programs that we offer. And, um, and how this plays out in, in, in a typical program is you will have, um, you'll have a time where you have the webinar sessions um, or in-person uh, sessions, you know, post COVID hopefully. Um, and that will be supplemented by the online courses um, and the online platform, which will give you access to different tools and resources that will enable you to download the tools and take them back within your, your own uh, settings and start to apply what you're learning. And um, that is also supplemented with different activities and access to your peers so that you're able to interact with one another and share learnings and insights as you go through the course. And then we also provide um, discontinual support as you continue to, to work through the program. So that way you're not, you're kind of not on your own, but through our account managers and the um, Agripreneurship Alliance team, you will continue to get um, 
uh, support and access uh, throughout the, the, the program. Um, and, and one of the things that we, we get asked a lot is whether this, this actually works. And I think Stephen and, and Anne can actually attest to the fact that this, this has been working for a lot of um, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs who are making their starting in agribusiness and they have seen the, um, the impact of the program as they continually apply the, the tools and the learnings within their, their startups. And so I think I'm going to pause there because of time, but i um, happy to share more information after this. Um, and yeah, we do look forward to seeing you on the platform and having you engage with us. Thanks, Steve and Anne. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, our partnership has been running for the last three years, and it's really exciting that we can support Go Getters Agripreneur Prize 2020 together through the provision of the entrepreneurship and agribusiness course. And so we could not do this without you. So thank you so much. What I want to talk about next is about the course itself. And to give you an idea of what the course looks like, what the um, expectations are in terms of how people can engage with the course, but also what will you actually get out of participating? So I think the first thing that I really should talk about is why entrepreneurship and agribusiness? Why is it important, do we think, to enable people to go through a learning process that explores their business? And why agri-food? Um, obviously, Africa has got fantastic potential for the future. Africa has got a burgeoning youth population, um, it's got fantastic quality of soils. It's got a ready internal market. The trade barriers um, between different countries and different sectors are starting to change. And this all creates an environment that um, means that in, um, enthusiastic, innovative, young entrepreneurs have got opportunity to develop great businesses within the agri-food sector that create good quality, safe, nutritious foods that are accessible to the people of Africa, to look at potential for export um, potentials as well, to look at um, developing raw products, raw produce, or adding value to, to foodstuffs, um, or developing the services that are needed to wrap around the development of a strong agri-food sector. And to develop a, a really good business and to take it either through launch or through upscaling, an entrepreneur really needs to be very clear about what their business idea is. What, what is the product or service? What is the value chain and the market channels and the cost structures for the business? And we found that talking to a lot of entrepreneurs, not just in Africa, but elsewhere as well, people can be really good at tell, selling the story, the dream of the business, but actually going into detail about um, what the business is, the core fundamentals of the business is really important, particularly if you're starting to think about the need for investment. So we developed with the African Management Institute, Institute the Entrepreneurship and Agribusiness course, which is a unique course. It's firmly embedded in the agri-food sector, in the African agri-food sector. It's a course which is, will take you through the process that um, is driven by the business canvas model, which is something that you'll be introduced to, and will ultimately furnish you with a high quality business plan which you can use both in terms of developing operations, to look at investment, um, to look at uh, your channels, which will enable your business to grow. It's exactly what it says on the tent. It's a business plan. It is the document that clearly outlines what you need to do to launch or grow your business. So the course itself, um, we aim to be able to provide this course over the next 10 weeks. It's an online course and the course itself is very much driven by your own um, needs as a learner. So the idea is that you engage with the course through 
um, the dashboard, which many of you will already have seen. Um, and you are able to actually start viewing the materials um, immediately. And the course is built up of a number of different core elements. The course itself is based across a number of modules. Um, and I'll talk about those in a few more minutes. Um, but each module basically includes um, some videos or audios to set the scene. We introduce a fictional case study, which we call Trident Fish Farms, which is um, a fictional but based on um, figures from East Africa of a group of young agripreneurs who want to start up a, um, a above ground fish farm and looking at the added value products that they can develop from that as well. And using this case study, we can take you through a whole range of exercises and quizzes that, and, and use of tools that will enable you to reach the end goal of having this fantastic high quality business plan at the end of the course. This means that the course can either be as short or as long as you wish. Um, we expect everybody to finish by mid-September, at which stage we are pleased to offer the opportunity for you to submit your business plan to us for review. And so every business plan that we receive, we will provide written feedback to that person um, or to that business team. Because a business plan is a living document. It's never finished. Um, and that offer, I think, again, is a, is a very valuable um, opportunity um, as your business plan will be reviewed by um, a panel of very highly skilled people um, based here. One thing I should mention is that the course is online, but we, it has been de developed to take into account the challenges of data access and bandwidth across the different countries of Africa. And so what we try to do is make sure that Everything that you see on the course, whether it's a video or an audio um, transcript of the video, if you can't access the video, or a written transcript can be downloaded to your smartphone or to your tablet or to your laptop so that you can actually work on everything outside uh, of um, a broadband Wi-Fi environment. So that you can actually, if you can access an internet cafe with Wi-Fi or something similar, you can download the materials that you need so that you can actually then work at home where you might not have access to a high quality um, Wi-Fi signal. So as you can see on the screen that's come up, um, we're just giving you an idea of some of the, uh, the resources which you will download through the course. And as you can see, there are a whole range of tools, case studies, lesson summaries, audios and activities to enable you to take charge of your learning and to be challenged through a whole range of different medium to enable you to complete a high quality business plan that we've already talked about. Okay. So, so the, the course is structured in 10 modules. That's why we've, we've setting up a webinar each week. And you know, we do recommend following one module per week. That is our, our recommended schedule. But as Stephen said, if you want to do it faster, then um, that's really up to you. So we're going to now. So what we, have, what we would like to do is just show you um, the course introduction video from the course itself.
Hi, Anne and Stephen. Uh, I think there is a problem with the video. We cannot see the video. Yes, we, we, we intended just to show that about that amount. Um, hopefully you got the sound anyway. Um, I, 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 we need to work out how to show the video as well. <laughs> we'll do that by next time. <laughs> Sorry. If, if we send the link, we will include that in the materials that will be going online. So to everybody that, that is listening, you will get an email with a link to this webinar and a link to the video. And the video is in the course materials anyway, so they will... We'll see it there as well. Okay. So the, 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 the idea of the course is that um, by the end of it, as I've mentioned, you'll have a, a, a high quality yeah. business plan that has been developed by you for the business idea that you have. So that you'll have the opportunity to identify what business opportunities are available to you, what um, channels you need in terms of your, your own supply chain, to look at what you will um, be able to do in terms of marketing your product or services, to look at the financial structures of the course in terms of um, your startup costs or upscaling costs, looking at your revenue streams, but also looking at um, your investment needs as well. And the financial section um, is really important to any business that wants to grow and develop. The course is interactive, as we've already mentioned, and as you can hopefully see, um, we have got a webinar series which is there to support and enhance and, uh, and enable your own engagement with the programme. As we've already said, the course itself, we think, takes about 10 weeks to do. There's about three hours of learning for each module, um, which really is um, there to enable you to take the time to engage with the course materials, but then apply it to your own uh, business environment, to look at the context that you operate within, both looking at the environmental challenges, the community, the community structure, the legal reg regulations that you have to work to, as well as the markets and the ecosystems that within which you operate. And we really do firmly believe that it's important to take the time to really explore those issues very, very deeply to enable you to come up with a very personalized and individual business plan. And in each module you have templates um, which you will use to construct your final business plan. And each template, it, you have an example filled in for the, the Trident Fish Farm, including, for example, in the financials um, and the business canvas, the value proposition canvas as well. So this helps you in, in stimulating ideas to when you're completing your own templates. Now, if you have a pressing need for a, a business plan and, you've, and you have the time, you are welcome to try and r r go through the course much more quickly than 10 weeks. But ideally, give yourself the time to do this properly because it's worthwhile doing. And the quality from our own experience of business plans that come out of a business that has, have taken the time to engage with the course over several weeks generally is far higher than business plans which have been developed very, very quickly through this course process. And what we will do is each week at this time, right through the next 10 weeks, we'll be offering um, a webinar like this. Now, this is a slightly unusual one. It's the introduction, as you can imagine. But for the weeks following, each webinar is based around the topic that we would expect you to be at in terms of the course flow. And each session will involve guest speakers. It will involve um, examples of uh, small businesses that have arisen from the entrepreneurship and agribusiness course previously. And it will look at the, some of the core concepts within that element of the course. Now, one question that's been put to me has been, do you have to complete all of the webinars as well as the online course? And the simple answer to that is no. We encourage you to engage with the webinars but we recognize that people are busy. We've all got other um, factors that we have to take into account when we're scheduling our, our own time. So we encourage people to engage with webinars, 
if possible, live. But we understand, understand that not everybody can do that. We encourage people to access the um, webinars as a stream or download at a later stage if you've not been able to watch the live one. Um, and we really do hope that you can engage with webinars and start using the question and answer function as some people already are to let us know what is happening in terms of the, the course that we're doing and what you need to enable you to um, fulfill the course. So um, that's, I think, is everything about the course introduction to this point. Um, sorry, I'm just seeing some questions are coming through at the moment. Um, could we go to the next slide? Yes. Oops. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. So what, what I would like to do now um, is each so each week we're going to have a guest speaker, and the speakers that we invite come from a whole range of different backgrounds. Um, some will be from Europe. Many will be from. Um, different parts of Africa. Um, some will have very localized um, experience. Some will have a much broader strategic um, role or um, vision. And today we are really, really grateful to be able to welcome um, one of our close friends and colleagues, um, Steph Stephanie Galatova from the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization. And Stephanie, I'm very, very grateful for your participation today and I would really like to invite you to say a few words um, about uh, how you see um, the development of agri-food, the agri-food sector and entrepreneurship within that um, across Africa. So thank you for joining us Stephanie. No, thank you very much and it's, um, it's, it's a privilege to, to be invited to participate um, in, in this webinar. And I'd just like to say that uh, currently I, I'm based in uh, FAO headquarters, Food and Agriculture Organization headquarters in Rome, but I have spent like close to 20 years in Africa. So I, I am quite familiar with, you know, uh, some of the issues regarding uh, agribusiness and entrepreneurship on, on the continent. So, so thank you so much. And first of all, I would just like to underscore the, the importance of agribusiness in Africa because the agricultural sector remains the backbone of the economy in, in most African countries. And um, creating sustainable employment and income generation for young people is a top priority for all African governments. And the, the agricultural sector definitely provides the best opportunity to, to do this. So, so as FAO, we, we receive requests from governments all the time. You know, how do we do this? How do we provide employment and income for, for young people? <clears throat> and what we always advise um, African governments is that the agricultural sector does offer huge opportunities, more so than any other economic sector. Um, it can provide gainful employment and generate incomes for a really significant number of young people. There are other sectors definitely that can provide those opportunities, but not in the number that the agricultural sector um, can provide. But the potential of the agricultural sector has not really been exploited so far. Now, unfortunately, agriculture in Africa has often not had a very good image. It's been frequently associated with smallholder farming, so traditional, labor intensive, outdated in terms of production, processing, and marketing. And this, this image has really deterred young professional people, you know, people like yourselves, you know, who, who've been to college and university, who've got degrees in engaging in the sector, because who wants to be wielding a, a hoe on, on a small farm? <laughs> 
Um, but there are great examples of successful African enterprises that have overcome these kinds of stereotypes and they've created modern and efficient and competitive agribusinesses. Unfortunately, there are still not enough of these, but FAO and other UN agencies have really reaffirmed their support to assist these kinds of small scale agribusinesses to, to establish themselves, to grow and flourish through various capacity building measures. And I have to say for FAO, this is really a top priority, particularly under the, the new DG, who, uh, Director General, who's really emphasized, you know, um, support to, to the private sector. <clears throat> um, so basically we as FAO are absolutely delighted to partner with the Agripreneurship Alliance because I think we, we share absolutely the, the same vision. And I think that the Go Getters program is a, is a unique opportunity for, for all of you who've registered on this course to gain the knowledge and the expertise to, to establish and grow your enterprises into successful businesses. So please take advantage, please take full advantage of, of this unique opportunity. Um, so, so on behalf of FAO, I'm really delighted to be associated with this initiative. And I would love to get feedback and updates on how this program is helping to, to improve your businesses. And just, just for the future terms, so we, we would definitely like to establish a long-term partnership with the Agripreneurship Alliance and also to identify critical areas where we can provide support to build small-scale agri-enterprises into successful businesses that contribute to sustainable employment and incomes for young people and also at, at the national level to promote overall economic growth. So I, I really am interested in following this program and, and I hope you will all participate and, and benefit from, from this opportunity. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, I think it's amazing that um, a large organization like the FAO is really taking up the challenge of supporting the agri-food sector and particularly um, helping release the potential that young entrepreneurs have across Africa in developing um, their communities, creating great businesses, but creating a sustainable agri-food system, which um, will hopefully provide good, safe, nutritious, and accessible food to the peoples across Africa and beyond. So thank you. Um, if anybody has any questions for Stephanie, please post them on the Q&A and um, then uh, Stephanie will be able to answer them. Yeah, definitely. I'd be happy to. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Okay. Um, so so the, the next thing that we want to talk about is learning online. It can be a challenge um, and we recognize that. And so we do have some tips on what you can actually do to try and make your learning journey more fruitful for yourself and uh, with the end goal of developing that business plan. So, Anne. Okay, thanks Steve. Um, I'd just like to mention that I've also been an entrepreneur myself and actually two of my three children are also entrepreneurs. So I've been exactly where you are, starting up a business and then growing it. And it's a very exciting journey, but it's a challenging journey. And we really hope that this course is gonna help you in that journey. Now, online courses are particularly um, challenging to do. And so we've got a series of tips on how to make the most out of it. So number one, re be really clear on your goal. Your goal is to build a really great business plan. Or if you're already running your business, it's how you can really renew and reevaluate the business. COVID-19 is bringing big challenges to all of us. It's changing many things dramatically. So through this course, we can really step-by-step reevaluate how you can adapt your business in light of all the challenges from COVID-19. Number two, you need to treat it, the online course like a job, like a real task that you need to do. 
It's not just something to leave to 11, 12 o'clock at night, but really make a study plan, manage your time carefully, and have dedicated study time blocks. So set aside time each week to do the to to, to follow the course materials, fill in the templates, and then you'll get the most out of this course. If possible, find a quiet place and eliminate distractions. Then break down your tasks into different elements. If you can't have one block, have short times um, where you want to achieve one particular task. It can be a very lonely, lonely thing starting your own business. So really use this opportunity to connect with others. You can make use of the chat on the platform and during the coming days, we'll be setting up a WhatsApp group where you can exchange together and you can also ask questions. You're going to learn as much from each other as you will from, from us and the, and the course materials. So make the most of this. And you have the possibilities also creating a team with other participants to share your, pro, your progress. The course content requires you to find a buddy and you can either find this buddy through the platform itself, another participant, but we really would encourage you to find somebody local that um, can advise you and can be a discussion partner and um, review your final business plan before you submit it. And then number 10, Try to beat the deadlines. Don't leave the assignments to the last minute. It's only going to add stress. And in that case, you won't do your best. But you, the course, we had a question um, on the, uh, in the Q&A about when the course will finish. Well, as Stephen mentioned, it's going to finish um, mid-September. Um, the last webinar will be uh, September the 9th but you can follow the materials at any time. Nothing closes down. You can go back and relook at another module if you wish. But um, as I say, we, re we would recommend if you can, do one module a week, follow the webinar, and then on to the next one. And then, because then it leads you step by step to build your very solid business plan. Okay. Thank you, Anne. So we so we're still getting a lot of questions coming through, um, and um, I'm going to pass one question on to Stephanie, if I may. Um, we have had a question from um, Nigeria, which is, "What does FAO mean?" <laughs> so, so FAO is is the Food and Agriculture Organization of of the United Nations. And um, basically, it's, it's a member organization. We have um, 190 odd members. Um, so, so these are like governments from around the world. So, so basically, FAO is global. It's operating in, in Africa, in, in Asia, in, um, in Latin America, all, all over the world. <clears throat> And uh, so, so basically, F FAO responds to, to, to the requests and the demands of its members, which are the, the country governments, on uh, supporting um, uh, their, their efforts in, in developing the, the agricultural and, and agri-food sectors. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, <clears throat> that, 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 that's what FAO stands for. <clears throat> I, I, hope, I, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> I'm sure it does. Your answer was very clear, Stephanie. And I, I do recognize that I kind of threw your ball there. And you caught it <laughs> impeccably. So thank you. Yeah, we have another question also to you, Stephanie, which says, um, was first as a comment, we aim as we learn also to help our young African brothers and sisters first have a positive perception on agriculture, but also help keeping their ideas in practice. So they're asking, how does the FAO help us do this? Okay, so, so we 
Uh, we, we have worked very closely or we are working very closely with, with the African Union Commission, which basically has the mandate for agricultural development or transformation in, in Africa. And so, so we basically work towards their goals and ideas. And I don't know to what extent you're aware of, um, you know, the, the various declarations that have been made under um, the African Union, the CADEP, the, um, which is like um, a, a commitment for, for all countries to, to contribute a certain amount to, to agricultural development. And then later on, the, the Malibu Declaration, which again is, is looking at improved livelihoods for people through transformation of, of the agricultural sector. So, so we basically work with the African Union and also with, with other you know, African organizations and institutions in terms of, well, a variety of aspects. So definitely like um, the, the production and productivity aspects, but also very much in terms of the, the agribusiness sector. So, so you know, how, how do you develop the agribusiness sector in terms of um, industrialization, in terms of processing, in terms of market access? And so, so one, one of our priority areas is really to, to work with small and medium scale agro enterprises who are trying to, to do that, you know, to, to process Africa's um, raw products, raw commodities into value added products that can be marketed on domestic markets, but also also internationally and that that requires a lot of different capacity building measures um, you know uh, food processing how to how to improve the quality and the safety of the products but also in terms very much in in terms of, of the business aspect so so how do you develop a, a business strategy how do you identify your markets how do you develop a business plan how do you do your your financial um, management? Uh, so so yeah, a, a lot of different things. Um, but of course, we we can't do that all by ourselves. So that that's why we need really good partnerships, like with with the Agripreneurship Alliance. So so I hope that answers the question. <laughs> It does indeed. Thank you, Stephanie. We're, we are starting to get quite a few questions coming through, which is fantastic. We're going to try and answer some of these um, as um, they're coming through. Um, if we don't have time to answer everyone, we'll make sure that we get answers to people. Both um, Jackson and Marcus are asking about um, the chat function. Well, there is a chat function in the platform, but we will be setting up a WhatsApp group. Um, to enable to to ask questions and exchange um, experience. Um, we've selected WhatsApp because in our experience that is the most widely used that um, you know people can easily access. So that's going to be the um, the um, the supplementary platform for you. And as I say, it will be set up in the next few days. But we do encourage you to use the community <laughs> chat wall, as my um, Anne says on the dashboard of the course once you've registered, um, because this is a very good way to actually engage immediately with people um, on the course, but also is a good way of, if you've not been able to access uh, or find a buddy to support your learning um, within your own community, we can um, obviously encourage you to um, post onto the community wall within the dashboard to actually advertise the fact that you're looking for a buddy, the actual type of sector that you're working with, and hopefully build relationships within that. One of the key things that we know is important to be an entrepreneur, and we, we both talk from a bit of experience, is that the ecosystem that you work in, the support network that you develop is vital. You need to have a whole range of different types of people around you who can offer challenge, support, um, skills, knowledge and experience that you may not actually have yourself. And um, we have had one question from Adwala, which is, does an agripreneur necessarily need to be a marketeer? And the answer is no. You need to understand it, but we don't, uh, but being an entrepreneur means that you are in many ways a generalist who's got a passion for a particular area. 
And so you need to be able to understand the different things that a business does, create a value, a value chain, um, have uh, distribution channels, be able to reach out to your market, um, manage your finances, but we may not necessarily have all of those skills ourselves, but we need to be able to recognize that those are important to make our businesses successful. And then how do we find people who can help us with those? Mm -hmm. But all the young agripreneurs who followed our courses, I don't think any of them have been marketeers, but they're learning the marketing skills. Then we have um, Nochiata, um, who's asking if we're going to have assignments at the end of the course, and are there certificates of attendance that are going to be given to successful participants? Well, you, during the course, you, there are quizzes. They're not exams, but they're just to, to stimulate you and to improve your learning process. The final assignment is to submit your business plan. And as Stephen already said, if you submit your business plan, then you will have a review by experts who will give suggestions on how it can be improved further. At the end of the course, you can download a certificate um, automatically from the platform, and this will be a certificate of, of attendance. Chi Chi has also- And sorry, uh, Stephen, sorry, could I just come in for, um, ju just to follow up on, on what you actually said about the, uh, the various areas of expertise. <laughs> Please do, Stephanie. Yeah, go ahead. No, thank you. I, I think that that was a really, really good comment because, um, you know, I think when, when you're setting up a business, you definitely don't have all the different areas of expertise that it takes to make a successful business. So for, from my experience, it's, it's really important to, to identify good people that you can work with because, you know, there, there will be people who have technical expertise in terms of, for example, food processing and, you know, the quality and safety aspects. There'll be people who are good in finance. There'll be people who are good in business management. There'll be people who are good in marketing. So uh, I think it's, it's really important to, to, you know, <laughs> to um, like um, understand that one person doesn't have all those skills and you really need to assemble a, a good team that has all those different aspects of skills that are needed to, to run a successful business. And, and I think some, that's something that's not always recognized because a lot of small businesses rely on one person and that one person may have skills in one area but not in, in the others. So, so, so I would advise in setting up a business or in growing your business, you know, make sure that you get all the relevant areas of expertise from all these different, uh, different aspects, because one person can't do it all. <laughs> Thanks. Completely, yeah, Stephanie. Absolutely. And there's the, one of the modules is just about this, bringing together the team, not only the team of people working directly with you, but the partners you need, suppliers, um, et cetera. Um, so it's really important to, um, to have the right team around you. So thank you, Stephanie, for those comments. Yeah. So we also have some questions coming in about certificate, um, certification. And Patricia, um, if you can uh, hear us, um, I'm hoping that you can uh, come in um, with some uh, support on how to answer these questions. Um, so Andile and Charles are both asking about certification. Do we get a certificate at the end of the course? Who validates these certificates and how can those certificates be used for um, activities such as uh, fundraising? Um, yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, so yes, we, we do have certificates at the end of the course, but we do also emphasize that um, the whole intent of the course is, is not so much um, to, to end up with a certificate, but really ideally is to end up with that um, marketable business plan as, as Steve uh, mentioned earlier on in the presentation. And so we encourage participants to, to go through it knowing um, with the intent that at the end of it, they want to have a very solid business plan that they can then go ahead and approach our funding organizations and institutions to assist them with um, 
the the funding to support the to support their business idea so so I, I want to just encourage all participants not to think of it as your traditional learning where you get a certificate at the end of it and you know you're happy about it it's really uh, the value of the course is really in getting that um, solid business plan that you can then use um, for funding and I think um, Steve and Anne can attest to the fact that for previous participants who, who've taken this seriously and ended up with that business plan they have been able to get um, funding as a result of, of having a solid business plan so that is how I would answer that question Mm -hmm. That's great, Patricia. Thank you. Patricia. Thank you. But of course, and of course, you can you can use a certificate in your your funding applications. Mm -hmm. So one of the this also brings me to an earlier question, um, which was: Is there funding available for people who complete this course? And I am sorry, but there is no funding available for people who complete this course from the Agripreneurship Alliance. Um, the offer that we're making to you is really valuable. It's the opportunity to participate in the Entrepreneurship and Agribusiness course to help you develop a high quality business plan, which is in essential for gaining investment for your business. We will be going through uh, the financial structures and without being, having a very clear idea of what your financial basis is of your business um, when you're talking to an investor or a bank manager about a loan or an investing angel, for example, you need to be able to talk about things like profit and loss. What investment do you need? When is going to be um, the point that you break even in your business? Um, and so we help you develop those figures using the example of Trident Fish Farm, providing you with a financial template, which you can fill in yourself, um, and we'll give you that information. We also, towards the end of the course, talk about um, pitching. How do you actually present your business idea? How do you shade the messages that you have to different audiences, whether it's an investor or whether it's a potential client? So this is what really we're giving you the opportunity for. And the course really is something that the more you put into the course, you take the time, you actually apply the learning that you have to your own context, the ecosystem that you work within, the business environment that you work within, the better results you will have at the end of it in terms of a high quality document. Um, so we do, we're just going through, there's lots of questions, questions. coming through. Yeah. Um, I also have a question here from Chi Chi, um, which is about how long is the material available for on the course and how long can you access it for? So we are looking at this course um, run, being run through to the end of September. You go through the course in your own time. We recommend that one module per week is um, the best way to do this um, and the materials that you can access through that. You can also obviously download a lot of material and once you've downloaded that, you have access to it. Um, so we're trying to make the course as accessible as possible to everybody. And we have another two questions for um, Stephanie. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, so this is um, Tijana from Nigeria. Can the representative FO list the various opportunities available to young farmers and agribusiness startups in our country and how to access them? Well, I think they really need to go to the FAO website for that, but maybe you can say a few words, Stephanie, about the, the materials available on the FAO site. Um, yeah, I, I think actually the, the FAO country office is, is a very good starting point. So, mm -hmm. so I would encourage um, uh, the, you know, people to, to actually contact the, the FAO country office because, because they have the most relevant mm -hmm. information with respect to what's ap actually happening at the country level, whether it's in Nigeria or, or you know, anywhere else. Now, if, if it comes to more general materials, then obviously, you know, um, they, they can contact us in, in headquarters and we do have a whole bunch of materials, but those materials are more generic. They're not country specific. So, so I would really encourage um, um, people to, to first of all, contact their, their country office. That, that's the first 
uh, port of call. And actually, I, I just want to say that we have a new FAO uh, country representative just starting in, in Nigeria. I think he's going to be in post within the next um, couple of weeks, probably. So I think this, this is a really good opportunity, you know, to engage with the FAO country office, um, find out what, what they can offer. And then obviously the FAO country office will contact us in headquarters to, uh, for us to provide additional support and information and knowledge products um, that, that may be required. So, so that would be my advice on, on that. Mm. Okay, great, Stephanie. Thank you. We've got a few other questions about um, from Jackson about managing workers in an enterprise. Um, Lola is asking about branding. She's saying that branding products is very expensive um, outside Nigeria. Um, so I think these questions we will cover in the relevant uh, webinar for that module. Mm -hmm. And um, if um, there's other questions that we don't manage to answer today, we'll, um, we'll, we'll send you the answer to those. Yep. So I think I'll hand back to Stephen. Thank you. So we were going to talk about registration today as well, um, but we did promise that this webinar would last for one hour. And amazingly, we're already there. It's the time has flown by. Um, what I would like to offer is that um, register, not everybody who has attended this webinar has registered for the course yet. Please do so. Um, there is a, a how to register guide available on the GoGetters um, platform. Um, and um, if you have any difficulties um, registering for the course, logging into the AMI platform or activating the course itself, please do uh, reach out to me um, and you can find my email uh, to do that. Um, we may also offer, I, I just need to look at some time commitments, but I may also be able to offer a very short webinar um, at the end of this week or the end of next week, just to go through live registration process, just to help anybody who is having final pro um, problems with the access. What the one thing I will mention about the registration process to the course is that um, when you're choosing usernames, when you're choosing passwords, when you're inputting activation codes, everything is case sensitive. So you need to be very accurate about repeating your username, for example, making sure that you don't capitalize when you use small case or putting in extra spaces, for example. So that is one common problem that we do have um, that people are coming to us with. Um, I'm going to close the we webinar. Um, can I just say that I am really indebted to everybody who's contributed to this webinar today. Um, I would really like to thank Stephanie from the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, Patricia May Mayner from African Management Institute, and Dixon Naftali, obviously, from Go Getters and Generation Africa. But I would also like to thank everybody for joining this webinar today and for contributing with your questions and your insights that you've shared. I think that the Go Getters Agripreneur uh, prize of 2020, supported by the Entrepreneurship and Agribusiness course, is a really great opportunity to create a strong, uh, vibrant entrepreneurial culture, which can impact on every country within Africa. And I'm very proud that the Entrepreneurship and Agribusiness course is being able to be offered to the Go-Getters community, and that the Agripreneurship Alliance is able to play a small role in the supporting the learning journeys um, that everybody is on. So thank you so much for your time. I would just like to mention uh, one last thing that this webinar could not also have been uh, developed without the kind support of our core funder, the Swedish International Agricultural Network Initiative. And um, I know that Siani will be joining us in the last webinar of this series as well. So thank you to them, um, although they weren't able to join us today. But thank you so much. If you have any problems registering, please reach out to me. And I look forward to talking with you on the 
dashboard of the Entrepreneurship in Agribusiness course. And I look forward to speaking with you as my colleague Anne Ruland does at the next webinar next week. Okay, so good luck with the first module and see you next week. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>